Hey guys, guys, Big Toe back again, this time with another highlight reel uh, interview session we did in Costa Rica when we were playing the cage. Uh, this interview session has Fat Train, Michael Lonkar, Norm McDonald, and Phil Nagy, CEO of America's Card Room. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, click the like button, click the subscribe button, leave comments down below. I will get back to you. Enjoy the uh, interview and uh, talk to you soon. Peace. Hi, I'm Michael Longcar, and we are here in San Jose, Costa Rica for America's Card Room's Cage event. I'm accompanied by actor and comedian Norm McDonald, America's Card Room CEO Phil Nagy, poker commentator Justin Kelly, and poker Twitch streamer Jared Gavin, aka God's Big Toe. That's all right, awesome. so we're all down here for the cage. What has your experience been, each of you, being down here in Costa Rica for the cage? It was funny because being a tournament player mostly, I kind of felt comfortable. It felt a little tournament e for me. The blinds were going up, and actually, once I got down to like 30 or 40 blinds, it was really comfortable for me because that's my wheelhouse. But then I was talking to a lot of other people who are mostly cash game players, and I'm like, oh, this feels really like a cash game to me. So actually, I think you guys did a great job of making that hybrid and making it comfortable for everybody. Yeah, I think great. that's a good way to do it, is to choose one and play it like that. Right. <laughs> because I was, you know, I was always like. Uh, I was always confused as to which I should be, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You guys were all out in Vegas this summer. How would you compare playing a World Series of Poker tournament, how that felt compared to playing the cage? How would you compare the two? Well, as I loved this because it, so, it was so unique that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, you could come in last and make money, you yeah. know? And uh, so, so I really liked that. He invented it. That's right. That's, That's true. Right. That's true. How did that uh, come I, to you? Uh, I don't know. It's, I was I was actually I was looking at you know just different formats and and and, and how uh, cash games and tournaments play. And like you were saying, is it's it's the the millhouse for tournament players. It's it's that twenty thirty big blind shoving range, reshoving range, and it's it's where cash games. You know you're playing super super deep. And I said you know I want to do something 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 that not everybody solved right. And I don't want it to happen so often that everybody's going to be able to solve it. So keep it super high buy-in and it's it's well, it that's interesting. keeps it keeps it fresh because nobody can get a big enough sample size to say right. oh yeah I own the cage well maybe somebody can but we won't talk about so that. so they're playing <laughs> uh, the you yeah <laughs> so how do you how do you play it as a as a tournament no, well, it's it's it, it plays much more like a cash game than it does a tournament, yeah. but uh, you you have that you have that fallback that when you get to that you know uh, uh, fifteen or twenty big blinds that you can do you can still do that restealing kind of that restealing range, um, so it's it's depending on depending on the different situations you have to play really really different and a lot of tournament players they don't ever get into a spot where they're playing you know two or three hundred big blinds deep um, especially for really really big money right that's awesome this it, for me it's the great part about it is uh, I guess making everybody uncomfortable at the game that they're comfortable with <laughs> yeah yeah right right I also feel like when you're doing the World Series there's, the events are so big and they're so long it feels like work especially if you grind out a bunch of events like like I did and uh, this was, you know, a tight knit group of 30 ish people, and we all kind of came together and played. And it almost felt like a giant home game for a lot of money. And right. that, that was a great experience for sure. True. And that I mean, with these the $55 satellites for these players to get in and satellite their way to Costa Rica and get a whole good time in an extreme package, they're playing essentially this game. None of these players have played a 5100 cash game before in their life, ever. They couldn't even dream of playing that. So the fact that they're playing this now, and it's actually in a comfortable atmosphere to where I think they're actually probably playing their best game at a 5100 level. It's really cool for them. Yeah. Now, how did you jigger the, um, the, the blind? Did um, you it's, well, well, it went like this, and then a little like mm -hmm. that. No, uh, we ran some models, it's, and we, were, we looked at it, and we wanted it to run somewhere around 100 big blindish or 80 big blindish uh, average stack. And cage after cage after cage, it doesn't matter if you have uh, uh, 20 people or 300 people, it's going to stay somewhere around uh, it's 80 big blinds ish uh, uh, average stack, which, you know. Turns out we're pretty good at poker, so that's that's why the blinds ended up like that. Um, and, and and a lot of people 
every time every people come down here say, why don't you do these big tournaments? Why don't you do this? Why don't you add that onto the cage? Uh, and that's not what that's not what this is about. What this what this whole uh, experience was about was to make it small enough that you can still shake hands with everybody. You can come. F feel like you met WPN, like you like to, to help humanize the company. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times, uh, well, there's a lot of internet companies, you just don't know if it's eight guys behind a conference table. And, and, and there's people with hundreds of thousands of dollars on their account with us. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's good having that confidence that, oh, they are a real company. And, and, and I've actually shook their hand. And uh, it's, yeah, they're, they're decent people, or at least not the worst people in the world. <laughs> so we're talking about structures and Deep, deeper stack structures uh, on that note. I know, I think all of us, obviously except for Phil, just got done playing the Venom, the $5 million guaranteed Venom yeah. that had a very deep structure. Tell me what you guys thought about the Venom and the structure. Tell me what you guys think. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, it was kind of a funny thing. I happened to have Chris Mormon on my right the entire time in the Venom. So when I came here, I felt really prepared to have Chris Mormon on my right for two straight days. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what an opportunity, and the fact that it blew the guarantee out, and mm -hmm. again, it's book world records, like, what an amazing experience. I'm really excited for the next one. Yeah. Really, really excited for that. The structure was really, like, perfect, as far as, like, length. You got to play for the whole day. I never felt at any point like it was sort of a turbo, and I felt really forced to get my stack in. It was just kind of like, you can just play your game, you already know you're going to play for this 12-hour chunk, and you can just kind of go into coast mode and, and do your thing, and it was, it was really nice. Yeah. yeah. You can tell like, that the WSOP is, is because now when I look back, you know, when, when they would give you one dollar chip for every dollar you gave them, you know, so, so you're in a $1,500 tournament, and, and the first hand you lose a 30 or <laughs> stack. And, uh, and so this year, you know, uh, they, they fixed it, but uh, I can't even, it seems so weird to me now that you started with so little, you know, so few chips. And meanwhile, in the Venom, you started with, what, 300,000? Yeah. yeah. And it's huge, yeah. So here's a question for you two. Uh, how has your Twitch play affected you in the poker community in any kind of way? Uh, you mean it's like, how has my stream affected me in life or in poker and everything? Yes. Everything. Uh, one thing I thought was amazing, uh, I got to the feature table, and my phone started blowing up. And everyone started texting me. I'm like, guys, send me a DM. I'm, I love you. I definitely love you, but I'm trying to work, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, not now. And then I noticed, you know, it's you, when I sat there, one thing I knew there was going to be a bunch of people kind of waiting for me. And then when I was in the booth, you guys, you know, you see all the stupid toe emotes floating up and stuff. It's, yeah. it's really special, you know, and, and we're kind of talking this funny. You know, these people spend hours with me day in and day out, and we have a connection even though we've never met. And so just to have that kind of you know, admiration and support is, is amazing, you know, and you feel like you're doing it as a team. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, obviously coming from a commentary background, it's so easy in the booth because we get to see everybody's hand. And so then when I'm on Twitch, I'm interacting with the audience and I basically find myself doing commentary on my own hands and kind of just talking myself through like I would do in the booth, blind, essentially. Yeah. In fact, we did uh, commentary on the Venom, blind with no cards, and that was a really fun sweat because yeah, we got to guess people's cards. Yeah, and then when they, for us yeah, so and we'd flip them over, we'd be like, yeah, we called it. Yeah. We got it. Yeah, so that's a lot of fun. And uh, I yeah, just then think it's, then it's cool and it's honest. Yeah, I just think Twitch in general is uh, just a really great platform for poker and just going through and, and you know, good, bad, or indifferent, whether you're the worst player or the best player, man, if you make it fun and the people want to watch, it's just a good time, yep. you know? I also think in a way it's made me a better player. One, because you don't want to, you want to be good in front of everybody and you want to succeed. And two, I'm talking about my hands, every hand, over and over again, all the way through, that's, every that's, day. That's super, super Your important. fundamentals get super right. solid. It's, it's, it's because, you know, you, it's, it's in every hand you have, well, really three options, you know, to call, fold, or raise. And uh, a lot of times people just don't think about Complete. all the options uh, that would be called. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's you don't think about all the options in all the different situations. I, I see you guys on Twitch and, and, and being forced to talk about all of those situations every time. It's got to make you a better player. Yeah. yeah. And also with the, with the that you have an audience, mm -hmm. you know, that, it, that it's so easy to make a, a dumb play if you got 
six turn of oh, and they're not ashamed to let you know. Like they have no fear in telling you what they oh, think yeah. about <laughs> what yeah. you just did. Those are that's actually, that's actually, chat that's, pros. That's actually like in uh, uh, NASCAR. The only the reason they watch for the tr for the crashes. That's they they watch just so you can screw up and berate you about uh, it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Sometimes you're getting a big spot and you almost know the guy has you, but you have a really strong hand and you could make a really great laydown, but the chat and the audience will never know. And so they'll just be like, oh, how do you fold that? How do you fold that? And I'm like, watch, I know he has me beat. Then I click call and they're like, oh, I got I told obviously he had you beat. How do you call that? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like, it's so, it's so uh, like validating and unvalidating at the same time. You right, know? Right. Yeah. I did that, that I, one time I did a, a, a high stakes poker I commented and uh, I, I did the same thing. I didn't want to see the cards Yeah. because you know, when they, when they can see the cards, they go, what, it's the guy thinking, you know, right, obviously. Yeah. It's obviously. totally obvious that he, top, he flop top set yeah, on your over pair. Yeah. I mean, how do you lose there? <laughs> yeah, likewise, when just a king high is good and you're like, come on, this is good all day. And you're like, if you really don't know the cards and you put yourself in that person's shoes, there's no way this is good. I'm just going to fold, you know? It's just, it's, it's always really interesting when you can get behind the scenes with it. I stream quite a bit, as you guys know, and for me, I can honestly say the first three months of streaming, I think knowing that I've got a group of people that I don't know that are watching and judging mm -hmm. and assessing, it definitely affected my decisions, I feel like, for like mm -hmm. the first three months. Like, the psychological aspect of what are people going to think, and you know, you, you always want, obviously you want to make the right decision even when you're by yourself and now you've got 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000 people watching you so now it's really, you really feel like under the gun. And what about when somebody else raids you with thousands more viewers and all of a sudden, does it make you exponentially a little bit more nervous on your game when all of a sudden now there's 5,000 people watching you every move and you're like, oh God, the chat is scrolling so fast you can't even read it? Well, you guys all play online on ACR a ton. Tell me what your favorite ACR tourney is on the, on the regular schedule? Ooh, I have a few. The Sunday warm-up, I won't miss it. The $22.50K, I'm not gonna miss it. Uh, I got sick and uh, I thought I was had food poisoning and I had this little stomach condition, not a big deal. But OSS was starting the next day and I told my wife, I'm like, they're gonna have to have them kill me for me to miss the day. <laughs> so I played the first day of OSS, it was in the ER on Monday. No, <laughs> there was no way I was missing it. You know, and uh, so yeah, like uh, I have a bunch of them. You know, I love the series and the stuff. It's the, you know, for the biggest and the baddest guarantees, there's nowhere else to go in the U.S. You know, it's it's a great place to be. So the nurse comes in to draw blood, and you're like, hold on, I'm in a hand. Yeah, I got, you gotta wait. Uh, you hold gotta on, wait right now. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's it's everything on a Sunday. So we actually talked about this in the in the commentary booth a little bit, and uh, you know, Sunday is a day for church. Like our church is oh, going right. to online yeah, poker. Right. Like, that's what we're doing. That's we right. are going to church, you yeah. know? And, and as a Kevin Martin would say, we're at the Church of Ace King. That's, that's what right. it is, right? We're, just, <laughs> that's, we're, we're handling biz. Right. So pretty much, I, I, I don't miss any tournament on a Sunday, to be honest with you. So we're, we're doing this interview, as you guys know, right here in the heart of the America's Card Room. Yeah, it's cool, huh? Winning Poker Network headquarters. What I have never been in a... Uh, like it's all, you know. So that, tell me, tell me your physical. impression. Tell me your impression of the winning poker network, being down here and seeing everything. And well, it's like uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like uh, you know, it's like you you see a um, a dollar bill with uh, George Washington on it, you know, and then all of a sudden you're sitting beside George Washington. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but. That, I think that did it just Are fine. Are you George Washington? I'm totally just fine with that. I'm totally George Washington. Or a dollar bill. I'm not sure which one. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Three actually, dollar bill. It kind of shows you that this is a real business and they have Here's a real office with here. real people here and it's not six or eight people in front of a conference room. You know, it's the legit building with a legit business and, and uh, yeah, like it's an actual operation. Right, and they, and, and they love poker. Yeah, every single love person poker. I talked to last night was from a different department. And every one of them was talking about how much, even a bunch of them were telling me they never played poker before they came here or before they started in the industry. And now they have an account somewhere and they're, they're hooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get sucked in. I've had the pleasure of actually seeing uh, three offices now of WPN. <laughs> and they just, they're growing so fast. I feel like every time I come out to the cage, he's like, hey man, let me show you our current office and let me show you the new one. And I'm like, all right. And then I come out again and he says the exact same thing. 
And I'm like, are you serious? They're just leapfrogging offices because they're growing so fast. And this office is really, really, really nice. Super man. nice. It's a lot of fun. And you can just tell the overall camaraderie of the entire staff. It's a very uh, group environment where all the desks, all the tables, everybody's kind of like a tight-knit group. And uh, I constantly see there's a lot of different conference rooms. And for a reason, because everybody just gets in there for like a quick huddle. All right, let's touch base on things. I mean, it just it's a very cohesive group, and you can feel it. Yeah, we were sitting in a conference room before this, just hanging out, and uh, I happened to notice right outside the window, uh, Ricardo was walking out, and he was shaking everyone's hand as he walked down, and the whole group started laughing, and you can feel the family. Yeah. You definitely yeah. feel the family. Well, that, that's, 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 that's kind of the way we run the, co run the company. It's, it's for me, it's, I showed you my office right there in the very front. I like to be right there next to customer service, next to the marketing and development, and, and really have a feel of what's going on. And it's, it's it, I... It is kind of surreal, right? Because you know, when I when I started in the poker, it was it's three people, right? <laughs> uh, it's it's and it, it's, it's only one of them's been here longer than me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now shifting over to a new topic, bots. It's a word we've heard a lot over the last couple of years sure. in the online poker industry. Tell me what you guys think of WPN's success fighting the bots, and there have been many reports that have just come out in the last month that show lots of bot companies that don't even support America's Cardam anymore, bots mm -hmm. that don't even work on ECR. Tell me what you guys think about WN's success with this. I, can I, I just want to start. I just love their absolute transparency on it, right? First off, there's bots on every site, everywhere, all the time, so let's not kid ourselves, right? But at this point, I love that they're super open about it, transparent about it, and that they're kicking refunds. And constantly, it's just, uh, okay, let's go back and look at the books. This is funny, this guy's a bot. How did he win? Where did he win? Let's kick money back to the players. And I just, I respect that level of honesty and openness, to be honest with you. Also, when you guys are playing at your level, can you identify bots and then use it to your advantage? You know, it's funny, I happened to be studying not too long ago with a bunch of stuff, people that I, that I work with, and I didn't even realize that I just lost a hand to a bot. And they're like, oh, did you know who that was? And, you know, fortunately, they get, that guy got, happened to get caught and I got the refund, but... Uh, Being a tournament player, it's not as much of an issue, I don't uh, think. Oh, tournament. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I play this game because I love it, and I don't cheat because luckily I don't have to. And so I think right. making it fair for everybody is just, you know, yeah. you know, we want a nice, fair ecosystem for everybody. It just makes it better as a whole. We kind of, as, as a company, we looked at, okay, how do we want to approach this? What do we want to do? What's everybody else doing? What are they doing right? What are we, what are we, what are we doing right? Um, and, and being transparent about it again, right? Um, and it's nothing, nothing could make me happier that when I see in, in these bot forums, they say, oh, yeah, we still can't support WPN because they're doing this. Well, <laughs> I'm going to do more of that. Um, and where, it's, where it is, it's difficult to uh, uh, differentiate a bot from, from what, a, what a person would be. So our, it's, our philosophy was to go after the bot manufacturers and make the bots more difficult to work. Um, it, it, seems to, it seems to be working so far. And, uh, or, and randomly bot testing people. It's <laughs> a great story. Yeah, yeah. Right? What uh, we did was we outlined a, a, a six month and one year plan to you know, combat bots. Right? Um, and I don't want to get into too much, but we, we monitor all the, the, the commercial bots out there, and we see them complaining and how much they hate us and, 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 and that they're even removing. We're not supporting WPN anymore. Well, that's a win, right? Yeah, it's, right. It's, and, uh, and like you were streaming. And yeah, like as a player, you can feel the crackdown in a good way um, because I was playing, I had 12 or so tables playing, and all of a sudden I got an alert in my lobby saying, we need you to take the capture test to make sure a little security check, and by sheer coincidence, because I was playing so much and I was streaming, I failed the damn test on stream, and then got on Skype and messaged Phil. I was like, Phil, just to let you know, I just failed this test. It's me, you know. Oh, and I got an, so I got an email. Said, Oh yeah, that means you know, you're you guys so good. Yeah, I guess I'm you were botish. Brought, you were I don't know what happened. You're a human bot, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it was kind of funny that it happened that way. <laughs> I can for me, it actually makes me feel safer. Like I'm okay with it. Yeah, you know, and because I, I, I can personally say that. I'm amazed how much has been accomplished in such a short period of time with the bot issue because I feel like it's just, correct me if I'm wrong, just about in the last four or five months we've seen, as you're talking about, the capture, you guys have come out with the capture feature, um, tons and tons of refunds, being open and honest about everything on social media, yeah. and then I come down here to Costa Rica and you guys show me, and there's an entire room over on the other side of the building here that has 
a number of employees. This is the this is the bot room. I, I, you know, you guys show me. This is the security department. This is the uh, affiliate program department, and there's a room over here of employees just working on bots around the clock. Right. That makes me feel good. That makes yeah. me feel. And obviously, we've seen. I've seen many reports myself online that have the list of all of the 10 or 12 major online poker sites. This site is low safety. This this site's medium safety, and America's Card Room isn't even on those lists isn't anymore even now on because. The list anymore. You that's, guys have been awesome. you guys have been working it's, hard it's, it's, to just make the bots totally not work on ACR, and that makes me feel good. Yeah, oh, it makes good. me feel comfortable. Yeah, and you guys, I, I I can see and feel. I think it's this word's been being used so much, but sure. it's you guys are being so transparent that you guys are putting in a strong effort to combat this issue, and it's obvious it's been working. So continue doing your doing, and continue that room in the back with the bot employees, and, yeah. and it seems like everything's going good. Well, that's another thing about coming here, uh, because I think like there's always there'll always be not all, there'll always be, but in history, you know, offshore, shadowy. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And then when when I meet you and look you in the eye and I get to know you, you're a uh, you I know trust it's all you. true. Well, <laughs> no, no, I just <laughs> I just trust you. I mean, maybe you know you. Yeah. Well, that, you that's know. that's kind of that's kind of the way the, the whole reason the cage evolved like this. It would be great like if this. you could. You know, get that. Great to capture this, and that's what uh, somebody it. somebody was saying. This uh, this last cage is. You know, you should walk through and do a virtual tour for yeah. all the people yeah, that, that can't yeah, make it. Yeah. And um, that was it's it's almost I guess two years ago now is is why I designed the cage. Why why we said we're going to start playing the cage down here is because it's it's such a grassroots program where you've got you know 20 or 30 guys that you're bringing down here that, that, that are poker players and they see that you know you're not eight guys behind a conference table you're 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 a decent you're a decent human being and uh, it's over the over time and also i love that you play poker i mean maybe some people wouldn't like that but no it's awesome. nobody can deny awesome. phil's love for the game yeah. every single time i see the guy at breakfast or in the cages first thing he does is open up his phone he has a notepad with all the new poker things he was thinking about last night. The guy does not stop. Wow. Yeah, it's I definitely, definitely. And, and moving to our new software platform, like you were talking about earlier, it's, it's kind of like we live in dog years, right? Because everything happens so, so fast. It's, it's funny that it just last cage, we, it had been 10 days since we moved software platforms when you guys came down here and you were looking at our other office and you were seeing beds in the office because we were staying the night at the, is because there was so many different things going on with the software. Um, and two, yesterday is ran a million dollar Sunday and no sweat, right? Um, it's, it's, it's nice to see a, a plan come together and things work out. Now, granted, ha, has, it been, has it been absolutely flawless? No, right? Um, but it's, it's, are there going to be more bumps in the road? Absolutely. Well, we're going to be t top two in the world, and I don't believe we're going to be number two. But it's, it's, we're, we're on that track, and, we, uh, and we've worked really hard to get here, and I don't think we're, I don't think we're ever going to stop working hard because we really, you can feel it here, we enjoy what we do. Right? Yeah. And when you enjoy what you do and make money at it, it seems like a win. Well, you guys play poker for a living. Yeah. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Good Thanks, Appreciate guys. you guys. Thanks, guys. I'm Michael Longcar, and yes, thank you very much for your time. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. We had a really good time hanging out with those guys in general and at the cage. Costa Rica was beautiful. It was an amazing experience. If you get a chance to play one of those cage satellites, be sure to take that opportunity and get yourself down there. It was fantastic. If you want to watch me play live on Twitch or do some of the PokerCoaching.com study session streams we do on Twitch, you can find those links right over here. Follow me on social media right over here. Click the like button, the subscribe button. Leave some comments down below, and I'll get back to you once again. We'll talk to you soon. See you later, guys.